I'm here today with the Zagato prototype, one-off uh, concept car. It was built on a Rover 2000S concept car uh, in 1965. I'm here with Nick Dunning, who is the club's um, archivist uh, and pens all or most of our um, historic articles. Uh, Nick, you're probably the most knowledgeable person on earth about this particular car. Maybe, maybe not. But there we go. Why don't you tell us more about it? Right, okay. Um, in 1965, Rover built 15 prototypes of a luxury version of the P6. Um, unfortunately, despite having lots of lovely features, they couldn't put the 2000S into production. They had 15 surplus cars, or one way to put it. David Bache, who is the chief stylist of the P6 and designed many great classic Rovers and other cars, potentially put one into production. Um, although it may have been a bit of a cloud dream with the Italian version of the 2000 Coupe is the TCZ which was built in Milan in 66-67 she is a standard Rover 2000 TC with some of the front of the car and quite a lot of the back of the car chopped away but mechanically, she is a standard vehicle. She has girling brakes, slightly later girling brakes. Um, and really, if you broke down on the continent and you needed P6 parts, she's there. She is... But the body is entirely unique and a one-off. She was designed... Zagato did the car, but the car was actually designed, or the lines were designed by a gentleman called Hercule Spada. I've got it right. Um, one of his cars, which is very similar, is the Lancia Zagato Fulvia, which looks quite similar to this side, but isn't as pretty in any way to case, really, as this one. Sadly, she was the only one they built, and by the time she was finished in 1967 and brought back to the UK, we were at the dawn of the British Leyland era and fancy uh, coupes really weren't having any chance of being made. She was, her ownership was retained by Zagato and Zagato sold her in March 68 to her first private owner after she'd been modded around a bit and hacked around a bit then. But what you're seeing now really is what exactly was shown at Earl's Court in 1967. When she came back from Italy, just before Earl's Court in 67, she had a few extras added to her, which is why some people believe there were more than one Zagato, and there certainly weren't. She used to have disc wheels, the fancy Ladies Magnum ones. Uh, the car is under the skin, a standard 2000, over 2000, although it's an S, which of course wasn't standard in the first place. Um, in the interior, which we'll come to in a minute, is a curious mix of uh, Soli Hull and Italy. Um, she's a 200 pounds lighter than a standard P6 and I can tell you that on the road she does not muck about. Um, she's a very quick car. The steering is quite light compared to a standard P6 of the era. The structure like. of the car is all steel. Um, although no. people think it's glass fibre, it's made of steel. No. Unlike one of your cars. Open the door. The interior is, is very much in common with a Lancia of the same age. Apart from, as you obviously see, if you're used to being around P6s, that the centre console and the heater controls and the switch gear are straight from the original 1965-2000S. The dashboard um, clocks, the speedo and the rev counter, though, are from a, a period, Humber Scepter, presumably 1967. When they built the car, it was purely as a showpiece rather than a functioning vehicle and the fuel gauge in all the time this car's been around has never worked properly and it indicates half full most of the time. Fortunately for me, when I was driving in this during the week, the um, reserve works as well to get you out of trouble. The legacy of its original incarnation is the wood gear knob which is very, very early and very desirable in P6 terms and that's the first test type of wood gear knob. I had an interesting dilemma with this car because I've quite convinced the owner John Hampshire that the heater fans didn't work and he's adamant that the heater fans do work 
And what nobody told me is that the heater fan control had been moved to this pull on the dashboard rather than the, rather than the flaps in the normal way as you would be for a standard P6. There's an awful lot of spaghetti as would befit an Italian car behind the dashboard um, and I need an auto electrician to get the wipers working. We've still got shin bins as per a standard vehicle uh, but the bonnet pull even though she is right hand drive is in the left hand shin bin under here and it's a handle. Trademark styling things of a Zagato is the switch here which raises the back, the back hatch to give you ventilation so you've got part amount of ventilation which works extremely well and I imagine would work very well in an Italian summer. The third engine this car has had in its life, I believe it's the third, and it is, as far as we know, the standard 2000 TC unit. The engine, this one, is the third one, went in in about 1976 and it's probably only covered about 10,000 miles and it's very lively. The carburetors are, I believe, HIF6s with cut down dash pots and again the performance of this car is extremely brisk. It's an absolute joy in a straight line. One of the nicest touches this has in common with an early 2000 TC or maybe from its original incarnation as an S is you've got a radiator with an overflow tank there which guarantees good cooling. She also underneath has the, um, has the original oil cooler that export TCs have, which again means that the car basically will not run hot no matter what you throw at it. So she's pretty well fully specced up. I wouldn't like to try though, and I'm not sure how they do it in taking the engine out. I assume it comes out the bottom of the car. On the road, she's an absolute delight and she's very light, but having driven a of a hundred or so miles, a sheer joy. So, we'll go around and have a look at the boot, if we can, if I can remember how to pop it. When, when she was built, she probably had a Dunlop braking system, the original type brakes. That she no longer has that, she has girlings and that could have been done by the factory in 67. We're not sure. The car also spent a lot of time at Seagrave Road, Rover's main depot in London, in 68, being readied for its first owner and it's then it may well have got the later braking system, we don't know. <laughs> she's even, most P6s are quite difficult to fill. This one's no exception and she's even worse actually and I have to say when I did went and put some fuel in her I got quite a good blowback from there. She did let me off though. This is where the, the button in the front raises the back hatch to a small degree which gives you superb ventilation in the hot Italian summers. And she is a very airy car to travel around in. This also, if I can remember how to do it, does if I can remember how it works, lift up and you can drop your luggage through there. So it's ultimate Grand Tourer. Fortunately, if I can remember how to do it, well I've completely forgotten, so we won't be doing that. Yeah, we will have to cut that one out because I can't remember how to do it. Oh, you've got it. <laughs> he's, he's cracked it. He's cracked it. And there's. So you stop at your um, Swiss hotel for the night, load up, your, take your bags out. It's a capacious car. Can I borrow it? <laughs> I'm afraid not. It's a nice trip to Portland. Yeah. The boot, now I don't think we've got keys for the boot at the moment. No, John's got them. The boot is very small and there's a spare wheel on the vertical in there. You can see in the boot where it's been cut away from the standard length of a, a P6, yet the trailing arms, the, which we're familiar to most P6 owners, are there just about six inches from the end of the car. The exhaust is also custom and a lot shorter but makes a magnificent note and uh, it's certainly one of the nicest sounding cars I've ever been in. So on the road she handles like a very light P6 and is really quite a joyful thing to behold. Um, when I first drove her I was literally shaking with nerves but after about a minute I suddenly realised I was in a P6 and this was going to be very enjoyable. So it's been a joy 
my colleague Duncan Gill has welded the sills on this and a lot of work gone into this car to get it to where it is now again. Um, it's been an absolute joy to have her. I'm glad she's going back to her owner who has owned it since 1985 who's going to be driving her out of here very shortly. She's a remarkable car and I would like to think that maybe in a couple of years time at this event we may get Gladys here as well and have the two variations on a the theme designed by two excellent designers with both the cars here. It's been a joy.